Um, so I will continue this topic. So the prostate cancer. It is a very important topic, non -S uh, uh, cancer, because the majority of uh, tumors are SNA ones. Uh, however, in the pursuit of diagnosing arsena cancer, we have a very good practice. Uh, so the situation has improved, but uh, that we forget about other um, uh, types of cancer. And uh, there is a huge number of uh, men who have prostate uh, cancer. If we consider the uh, size um, of um, this group, it is not a small one. So there are a lot of people who are suffering from uh, this type of cancer. So it's very important to develop the, the necessary treatment. Uh, WHO classification of 2016, it uh, specified from epithelial uh, tumors, the arsenal ones, adenocarcinoma with different uh, types of uh, tumors. I'm oh, sorry. And also non asthma type, so the ductal, urotelial, and also the flat cell uh, tumor. And um, uh, we will talk about different types. So uh, let's start with ductal carcinoma. That is a pro prostate adenocarcinoma, which consists of uh, different types of uh, glands with uh, cylinder cells and epithelium. And we have uh, cribriform, papular, and solid types. Uh, it was uh, described for the first type as endometrial carcinoma because it is localized uh, around uh, uh, the um, uh, endometrium. Ma Malikov and Pasht assumed that it comes from uh, the womb, from the residue of uh, the ductal part of the womb and the data of uh, IHC and ICC tell us that this is a, a prosthetic adenocarcinoma and endometrial um, adjective should not be used. It is traditionally uh, viewed as a more aggressive type of prostate cancer and uh, this has a high number of Gleason uh, scores and it is very difficult to develop the treatment for it so it's for ductal adeno uh, carcinoma there are some uh, there are two types the traditional ones and it is uh, located in an isolated position so it's about one point uh, about 0 0.5 percent of uh, cases and uh, there is another uh, type in the periphery uh, peripheral zone we have about 5 to uh, 12 percent of cases and the clinical picture is different for these two types when, when we have an isolated tumor a patient uh, has some obstruction signs and uh, then they detect some uh, bleeding elements uh, in a prosthetic urethra and uh, it comes into the bladder but the prostate can be changed in the course of the progress of the disease or cannot be changed that depends on each specific case as for the clinical features of the mixed one the so-called ductal adenocarcinoma uh, it uh, can coincide with the isolated one or it can be masked as uh, uh, solely adenocarcinoma so it's not a high level of P uh, PSA as for morphological uh, picture of uh, classical uh, ductal cancer um, can be recognized easily uh, the glands the solid structures quite recognizable and also pseudo stratification of nucleum as for histological signs so nuclear atopy 
and also the mitosis. If you see mitosis in the prostate cancer, then you should uh, think um, about whether it is a ductal cancer. And cytoplasma is the light one as the large one. Ductal um, cancer can contain the uh, mitosis, and then it can be quite similar to breast cancer. So that is what we can see on the slide. The picture shows that. And non-invasive ductal carcinoma, we can encounter that as well. Then we should specify it and we should uh, grade it according to Gleason classification. Uh, though we uh, see that it is not a non-invasive type of cancer, uh, the cystus um, type was not included into a WHO classification, though uh, we see that uh, quite often. And uh, it is um, located in the peripheral zone, so uh, it grows in this uh, large part and it uh, can come into uh, the womb area and the variant area. And another new type, uh, the pin similar adenocarcinoma, is very difficult to be diagnosed because it's very uh, similar to other uh, types. Uh, the location, though, of the glands is a, a little bit different, so it's not so dense, and we can uh, talk about the large adenocarcinoma, arsena ones, and urotelio similar type of adenocarcinoma is described. It is quite uh, similar to urotelial um, cancer, and what is worst, uh, uh, it is, uh, according to the IHC research, it is quite similar as well, uh, but uh, uretelial um, type of ductal uh, cancer has not been described in its isolated uh, form. So when you see such uh, picture, you do not have to search for two types of cancer. So that is the typical picture of the ductal cancer. So they do the resection. Uh, the patient is diagnosed uh, of, with a high uh, grade of malignancy cancer. And then it comes to uh, the patient comes for receiving the consultation. So when you see that something uh, is wrong, it is not similar to this type of uh, cancer, then we have to perform the immunohistological research. It's a typical uh, location, typical clinical picture, and the typical type of research. So an ordinary ductal uh, cancer is um, a very uh, clear picture, but there is a very unpleasant feature. We see the uh, layer in the uh, ductal uh, carcinoma in 30% of cases, the so-called uh, uh, basal cell layer. But, uh, it can be uh, reflected in uh, focal uh, type and in ductal carcinoma. We have a high level of ki 67 so the differential diagnosis should be performed to differentiate that uh, from other types. For that, we have to know the uh, clinical uh, picture uh, to um, prescribe the necessary uh, drugs. Uh, we should perform the IHC uh, research, and we can use carotene for that. And then if we don't see the expression, that is... Uh, this uh, type of uh, cancer, urotelial uh, cancer, has a solid structure and uh, we don't have the expression of uh, some types of the markers. It is uh, more difficult uh, to perform this research with uh, arsena cancer because IHC cannot help us here. So we are guided by uh, our retention, our experience, and one or two markers. We pay special attention to its localization and to the expression of nuclear atopy and also the metastasis in it. It is difficult to uh, diagnose it, the uh, fibrosis uh, PIN 
and um, this is the clinical uh, picture of the biopsy of the prostate so here you can see it in a zoomed in way so that is the structure and as for uh, PIN we see the uh, PIN vascular uh, parts uh, here they form the epithelial part in the section we should be uh, guided by the localization of this uh, structured and if we find the necrosis there it is um, for sure the um, carcinoma but whether it is arsena or whether it is a ductal one still has to be determined and uh, histochemical research can help us uh, to identify it so uh, for example a man can be operated and then we manage to find out what type of cancer he had so this is the only non SNR carcinoma the ductal one that is graded according to Gleason and it is recommended to grade it with uh, 0.5 and sometimes with 0.5 and when we have PIN variant it belongs to category number 3 as for the forecast uh, this is a more aggressive tumor in comparison with SNA adenal carcinoma 25 to 40 percent of diagnosis at the, the stage of diagnosis uh, already have the metastasis and five year survival rate uh, amounts only to 15 to 43 percentage and uh, we have sometimes to choose another types of treatment and uh, uh, prescribe other drugs uh, though it can respond to hormonal therapy at early stage we should uh, uh, choose the specific means of the therapy another type uh, this is a, a small cell cancer when we hear this uh, term we automatically think about lung cancer sure that is true but strange as it seems prostate this is the second uh, widespread type of um, uh, such cancer and we can encounter this type of small cell uh, cancer so the first one is lung cancer and um, this is the second um, place in 1977 it was described for the first time and uh, for the uh, histogeny uh, we do not have a specific answer to this question. There are three hypotheses. The first one is the small cell cancer develops from a malignant normal uh, endocrine cells that are a part of the organ, uh, but posts um, uh, metastasis uh, cell so that is uh, its structure the second uh, theory says that uh, it can develop with um, a differentiation of uh, the ordinary adenocarcinoma and after the treatment as a result of selection the resistant hormone cells with the uh, uh, neuroendocrine uh, differentiation and it is based on the fact that up to one half of the diagnosed cases of this cancer can um, progress after the ordinary adenocarcinoma and after the treatment is provided and the third theory uh, it can uh, proceed from it can be developed from the epithelium and these uh, patients are um, uh, symptomatic ones they already have a met metastasis and uh, have uh, the um, um, certain types of syndromes uh, they have uh, their prostate affected and PSA is quite low life expectancy is very small for such patients as for the structure of its cells these typical ones i will not go into details here it's very important uh, to detect this cancer because uh, it can be mistaken for an asthma um, cancer by the tactics and the treatment is quite different 
so it will not respond to radiotherapy or to hormones so it requires chemotherapy for sure to diagnose uh, such small cell uh, cancer we use uh, uh, neuroendocrine uh, markers you cannot use only one marker because uh, have a look at this uh, for example, only in 61% of uh, cases, the um, chromogranin A is positive. So I always use at least three markers. And uh, um, the lower the detection is of uh, the, the, um, uh, of the um, tumor, the less um, markers we have. And uh, with a high uh, grade uh, carcinoma, we have the IHC with uh, the detection of uh, uh, neuroendocrine markers. When we use the differentiation diagnostic for lymphoma, sometimes we have the similar situation in prostate. So the same symptom, symptoms can be identified in the same ratio. Uh, so IHC should be performed here for sure. Another uh, issue that we can face, uh, the primary diagnostics, the primary cancer of prostate, or is it a met metastasis cancer? So whether it comes from prostate to uh, lungs or vice versa, or it can uh, or it can come from prostate to the bladder or from bladder to the prostate. If we can find a question to the first, um, if you find an answer to the first question, because uh, there are some uh, surface protein for lungs to be considered and there are some specific markers that help us to differentiate these two types of situations. So we should bear that in mind that uh, sometimes a marker can be positive, though it doesn't mean that it is a prostate cancer, but it is very difficult uh, to differentiate uh, uh, the prostate to uh, cancer. You have just three minutes left. Well, I can finish up right now, so it's practically impossible to do that, and it doesn't have any um, clinical importance because the treatment is the same, chemotherapy. Uh, besides, in prostate, uh, there are highly differentiated uh, carcinoma, but it is uh, rarely encountered, and also some small uh, cell types of cancer. I will not uh, name all of them. And uh, there are some non-differentiated uh, focal cancer with a uh, uh, high number of uh, Gleason um, uh, points and a sarcomatoid carcinoma. This is a rare type of carcinoma that consists of two uh, compo components and they are combined in uh, different proportions, but the prevailing one is sarcomatoid uh, variant. This is the Asana carcinoma with a large number of points according to Gleason and according to the classification it falls into the category of Asana uh, carcinoma though if you have a look at the structure uh, it can be a ductal, it can be a flat cell, a small cell cancer so any type as for sarcomatoid component uh, can have different elements and uh, they can represent sarcoma or co contrasarcoma or any type of sarcoma. This is a very aggressive kind of uh, tumor and only surgical operation can be uh, the treatment. Uh, as for flat cell and uh, a small uh, flat cell cancer, so they can be treated with uh, uh, chemotherapy. As for morphological picture, it is a typical one. As for basal uh, cell cancer, it does not increase the PSA, but uh, it is expressed in the markers of basal cells and um, also uh, it gives the absence of uh, exp expression for other types 
of markers and the last type uretelial uh, cancer uh, their frequency is about three three percent of all prostate cancers uh, so it comes from uretelial uh, in urethra and periurethral uh, prosthetic glands and then just in the metaplasia, if we have metaplasia, uh, then it can be transformed to neoplasma changes. The secondary urethralial um, cancer uh, can be observed in patients uh, with the bladder cancer. In the clinical uh, picture of it, there are symptoms of obstruction and gematory and PSA uh, just uh, falls within the the limits of the norms and after a transuretral uh, resection you can detect this type of cancer uretelial carcinoma in situ it can spread in ducts and as in a of the prostate at different levels there are some peculiarities of staging TA one, when there is a vision uh, invasion in the tissue and uh, another T1, the methodological image. I speak about non-invasion types of cancer. They all are related to the prostate, but as for carcinoma in situ, there is a pegetoid, a feather pigeotoid features, which can be uh, uh, difficultly uh, difficult to uh, uh, diagnosed, and here you can see the biopsy of the uh, uh, prostate, and there is the initial urethelial cancer. So the H. Uh, IHC analysis is uh, uh, similar to the conventional methods, but PSA, PSMA, and PAP usually not expressed. But the residual prosthetic uh, secretory cells uh, can simulate the epidermoid uh, positive uh, reaction, which can lead to uh, misunderstanding and uh, misevaluation the forecast depends on the invasion and we it is necessary to look for the invasion five year survival rate after radical cystoprostectomy a hundred percent if there is invasion it is much less 45 percent and the treatment uh, uh, tactic if there is non-invasive urotelial uh, cancer, the uh, radical cystoprostatectomy is recommended because the intrabladder invasion is not effective. Thank you for your attention.